everybody. Just encourage you to join us in this time of worship. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. We believe in Lord, our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. song and you're coming, make a dance and you're coming, shout your name and you're coming, give you praise and you're coming, sing a song and you're coming, make a dance and you're coming, shout your name and you're coming, give you praise for oh, you and I, the praise of your song and you're coming, make a dance and you're coming, shout your name and you're coming, give you praise and you're coming, sing a song and you're coming, make a dance and you're coming, shout your name and you're coming, give you praise, all you and I, the praise is of your
Who needs that extra strength, that courage to face whatever situation they find themselves in right now? God, would you be with them? Would you hold their hand through it? Would they know that they are seated with you in the heavenly place? That is where they belong, right beside you, God. And that, of course, is our is your plan for us in heaven one day, in eternity. But right now, you are with us. Right now, our God is with you. So be confident today. Trust him, knowing that he's won it all already. Amen.
If you look for him wholeheartedly, you will find him. That's a promise from God to you. So are you looking? Are you listening? Because he is with you. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Pastor Dennis Boudreau from Victory Impact Center here in Port McNichol, Ontario. And I'm so happy that you're with us today. I just want to continue our series on I Will Build My Church. Hallelujah. Next Sunday is Easter. So we're going to have a Good Friday and an Easter message. And I hope it really blesses you. But I have a thought here. A few years ago, we were coming back from vacation, we had gone to Florida. We were tired, we were exhausted, and we were actually shocked when we got home. It was about five or six degrees Celsius in our home. It was cold. And I'm really surprised that our pipes didn't break. But it took almost four hours for our house to come back to its winter heat, like 69, 70 degrees. And uh, we were huddled in blankets, and we had a cat and the cat was actually huddled near the grills where the air comes out. I had to speed things up because it was actually that cold. So I actually turned the oven on in my kitchen to 350 for uh, at least maybe an hour or so, an hour, an hour and a half. Wow, what a time it was. So I'm really thankful that our pipes didn't freeze. To this day, we are still puzzled as to what happened. I don't know what happened with our furnace, how it kicked out and never got back on again. But putting aside that incident, I'm really thankful that I have a good furnace for the winter and a good air conditioner for the summer. It's important because summertime gets warm and wintertime it gets cold. It's easy to understand. But it helps keep our house at a pretty steady temperature, which is what you want. Well, you don't want to be freezing in the winter time. You got to set the thermostat up at the right temperature. And in the summertime, you want a bit of AC or fans or something to keep you cool. Because some of these summer nights, it's hard to sleep sometimes. So it's about keeping the temperature inside your home at a proper level so that you can enjoy life inside your home. I also thank God for technology. There's new technology that's been out for a while now, but it allows you to control the temperature through an app on your phone. So you could be flying in somewhere, driving in, and you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to bring my temperature up at my home. So you can control the temperature with your phone. That's really cool. Had we known that, we could have avoided a possible disaster that could have resulted from, you know, frozen pipes. Like I said, I thank God that our pipes didn't freeze. Now, I thank the Holy Spirit because He is making my home a comfortable place to live. Hallelujah. See, our God is a big God, and he has all the tools to make my home, my house, a comfortable place to live in. See, our God is a God of comfort, and he is building my faith and shaping my character that I'm be able to display a godly balance and comfort for those around me. You see, when people are around me and we talk and I want them to feel comfortable and I want them to be able to say, you know what, there's a great temperature about you. And so he's slowly rebuilding my character by removing the flaws in my life. And I really appreciate that in the word of God and what God is doing by his spirit in me. You got to want to improve by his spirit, not in our own ways. As we are obedient to him, we grow. We grow in character. We grow in the power of his love. We become that person that people want to be around. 
There's a certain comfort about us. There's a certain temperature about us that people will say, you know what? That person's got something that I want. I feel comfortable around that person. Praise his holy name. So we all have displeasing features that are unattractive. But God is replacing those ashes for beauty. And he does it by removing them flaw by flaw as we give him permission to do so. Today we continue our series, I Will Build My Church. Jesus said that, not me. He is building a church, not me. But I am part of that. I am that lively stone that is being added to that wall or that has already been added to that wall or as a brick in the foundation. That's what he does. If we look at a physical structure built with all kinds of stones and then cement in between, I'm either a brick or a stone, but the Bible says we are a lively stone being built together. Hallelujah. In one unit of unity in him. Hallelujah. Today, I want to look at three things. We looked at the foundation. We looked at the blueprint. We looked at the windows, doors, and rooms. We looked at the roof last week. Now, I want to continue, and I want to look at three things today. I want to look at plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. That's all part of a home. If they were without plumbing, it's basically a shed. But we're not a storage shed. We are being built up. Hallelujah. So I want to use the illustration of a home. And I want to look at the aspect of plumbing, the aspect of heating, and the aspect of air conditioning. Now, if you want to go with me to Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 4, let's see what we can work out here. This is the same portion of scripture of uh, Luke 4, 18 at the beginning, but then he continues on. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Now, ashes is worthlessness. It's been burnt to ashes, it's worthless. So that's what he's talking about here. The oil of joy for mourning. Well, why are we mourning? Why do we mourn? Oft times we mourn because of what the destroyer, the enemy, has destroyed in our lives, in the lives of others. So it's the destruction that's been caused then he goes on to say, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, people who are laden with burdens that have heavy heaviness, it's hard to smile. It's hard to be happy when you're burdened like that, at weightiness of heaviness on you. So we're there to bring a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting or the building of the Lord that he may be glorified. Jesus is building his church. And then he goes on to say in verse 4, And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. You know, this is a picture of a high efficiency furnace in good working condition. And as believers, we've been called to do a few things. We don't just say, Jesus, I believe in you, and just sit down and do nothing about it. No, believing is an action word. So we've been called to preach good news according to what we've read in Isaiah 61. So we need to let people know. We've been called to heal the brokenhearted. Okay, those who, who have gone through life and have been broken by the things of life. I just had this moment this week with my granddaughter. She came up and she was crying because her sister wouldn't play with her. And she's looking at me. She's crying. She goes, my heart is broken. And she's saying this in French. And But it only took about 30 seconds after that or not even a minute. And she was fine because she just got through it really quick. 
But just to say, she says, my heart is broken. And she's not even four years old yet because her sister would not play with her. But nevertheless, in life, people's heart have been broken. And we are called to heal that by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we've been called to proclaim liberty to the captives. That's letting them know, preaching the good news at the same time, that there is a life of liberty, that they don't have to be bound to the things of this world. We've been called to open prison doors. People are also bound in prison. The enemy has got them shackled up. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can break things over people's lives. Hallelujah. We've been called to comfort those who mourn. There's a lot of things that happen every day. You lose a loved one, a friend, a pet even. But people genuinely mourn. And it's up to us, the church, to see that and to give comfort to those who mourn. That's what I'm saying about the furnace. We have to have our a furnace that keeps the proper temperature in our lives so that we can dispense it over to somebody else. Hallelujah. We've been also called to give beauty for ashes. And who's the beauty here? It's the beauty of the gospel. Jesus himself. Hallelujah. I present to you Jesus, the beautiful one. Hallelujah. Because you are in a heap of ashes. Listen, Jesus is here and he will lift you up. And he will make something out of you. He will bring joy to you. Hallelujah. He will bring strength to you again. Praise his name. So these are all things that we've been called to. And we've also been called to repair ruined cities. Do you know how far the gospel can go when it is preached? Cities can be changed. Hallelujah. Cities that are ruined with crime. We can rebuild, spiritually speaking, we can rebuild by doing all the above things, by preaching, by healing, by proclaiming, by opening those doors, repair cities. Hallelujah. And it's all done by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hallelujah. See, we need to embrace in our lives the rebuilding of the Lord. When Jesus said, I will build my church, he first saves us and then he rebuilds us from the inside out hallelujah so people can see now one of the most important ways is by making sure our furnace and all of its components are working well you may ask well what does the furnace have to do with my spiritual life well listen for one thing the furnace is the origin of heat in your spiritual man the spiritual furnace i'm talking about it's called being on fire for jesus if you're on fire for Jesus, your furnace is working well. Hallelujah. Because you have a heat. Fire is heat. Being on fire for Jesus. In your physical house, the kitchen is the part of your house that you can see. And the furnace is the part that you cannot see. Okay, when you walk inside of a house, you're going to see the kitchen. And if you want to see the furnace, well, then you have to go downstairs. Sometimes it's, it's hidden in a room. It's usually tucked away in the basement. So spiritually speaking, the furnace is the part that people don't see. It's the hidden part of you. So your heart must remain at a proper temperature. The state of your furnace or the temperature of your furnace in your heart will show the world the state of your heart. One of the key indicators that shows that your spiritual temperature is right is the fruit of love. There are also other fruits like joy, peace, self-control, goodness, kindness, patience, faithfulness. What am I saying here? Fruit can only grow in the right temperature. Fruit don't grow in a cold, frosty environment. It doesn't grow. It's not an environment that's conducive to growth. Growth is always done. We need sun, but we also need the warmth. We need the right temperature. Who likes a crabby old man or a crabby old woman? You see, a not-so-good spiritual climate is when you're shivering all the time, when you're cold. You can't grow from that kind of temperature. And that's what I mean, you know, a cold-hearted person. That's not conducive to growth. That has got to be fixed before your spiritual pipes freeze and prevent you 
from the Holy Spirit flowing freely inside of you. Remember I talked about frozen pipes when we came back? That's what I'm trying to say here. And if you're cold inside, your pipes are going to freeze. It's just an image. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit flowing freely through you, through pipes that are that are unclogged, through pipes that are not frozen with your character, having been a cold character. Which brings us to explain what a thermostat is all about. A thermostat controls the temperature. It's the thermometer of your furnace, but it must be connected. You can't just go at a hardware store and say, well, I need a thermometer for my furnace and put it on the wall and not connect it. It's got to be connected. You have to remain connected to the Holy Spirit. And that represents emotional consistency. You're the one who sets the heat or the cold. Don't let the temperature influence you. Whatever temperature is outside, you control what's on the inside. Don't let the outside temperature control what there is on the inside. See, when we went to Florida, when we came back, the furnace somehow shut down and the outside temperature was slowly changing the temperature inside. So you cannot let that happen spiritually. Whatever goes around in this world, all the negativity cannot be allowed to change the temperature that's inside of you because the temperature that's inside of you is what determines how you're going to affect people. So that's why it's so important that the furnace and the AC is working good. You can't do it on your own. You have to let the Spirit of God lead you and guide you into fruitfulness. And like I said, fruits grow in warm temperature and in the sun. And we grow in the right temperature with the sun. Praise His name. So you might say the thermostat is the Word of God in you and flowing through you. See, everything is by the Word, by faith in the Word of God. The furnace is your character. It's the heart of who you really are. Think about this for a second. What kind of person are you? That's going to determine what kind of heat is going on in your furnace. What needs to change or improve in your life, in my life? I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to myself here. So it's important to know is there gas flowing into that furnace? You see, whatever needs to be discarded and burned up, throw it in the furnace of God. Give it to Him. Give it to Him. When we give things to Him, that's like throwing our, all our flaws, all our stuffs into the furnace and saying, you know what? Burn this up. I don't want this. And this is what keeps us warm. Hallelujah. Keeps our heart warm. If your heart is right, you can sustain whatever temperature the devil throws at you. In a cold environment, your house remains warm. And in a hot or heated environment, where everything gets heated around you, your house remains cool. You remain calm. That speaks of cool. I'm cool, man. I'm chill. I know the temperature around me is rising. But you know what? By the Holy Spirit, I'm going to remain cool. My spiritual AC is on. Hallelujah. I can handle this situation by his presence in my life, by what I know in his word, what he's shown me, by the wisdom, by all different kinds of factors. I can remain cool in a heated temperatures, especially these days. There's a lot of stuff. Wow, man, this world is changing so rapidly. It is unbelievable. It is unbelievable how the hearts and minds of people are changing for the worst, but also for the best. Thank you, Lord. There's a lot of people getting saved these days. There's a lot of people coming to the Lord because they see what is going on out there. It is not good, but God is moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you have to remain cool. Your furnace and your AC stabilizes you from outside influences. So I want to look a bit more at the AC. Air conditioning keeps the house cool on really hot days. Like I was saying, you know, we get days filled with pressures that can be difficult to withstand at times. But listen, Jesus is there. He's there. Just like the three Hebrew boys, you know, in Daniel 3.14, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, who would not bow down to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. There was a lot of heat there. And so they were thrown into that fiery furnace 
But Jesus is there. Now listen to this. Listen to Daniel 3, 19 to 25. I'm going to read it slowly. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Why? Because they would not bow down to the big statue that it was erected. That was the price to pay, the fiery furnace. And in verse 20 says, And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Now listen, these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast in the midst of the fire, burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the fire exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the guys who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew guys, the guards who took them, the soldiers who took them, those fires killed them as they were throwing them in. And it says on verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They looked and said to the king, True, O king. In other words, yeah, we did. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. You see, Jesus was the AC. Jesus kept everybody cool. Hallelujah. And Jesus will keep you cool in a heated moment. Hallelujah. If you allow him, if you put your faith in him, they put their faith in God saying, we will not bow down. It doesn't matter if we burn in there, we burn, but we are not bowing down. So we trust our God will keep us from burning. Hallelujah. Just like Daniel, throw me in the lines then. It don't matter, but my God will keep me. How many in here listening today know that we have to be cool? We got to be cool, man. When things get overheated it takes a cool head to shut down what the devil is trying to do he's trying to create a lot of heat a lot of friction okay friction is heat but we have to remain cool how many church splits could have been avoided with a cooler temperament how many problems could have been solved if we would have remained cool we would have allowed the ac in our hearts to bring a proper resolution we need to shut the devil down but we need to remain cool in doing so our overzealousness can often get us into trouble. Overzealous means you're on fire for something, you know, whether it's good or bad. What I'm talking about here is when things are not good, our overzealousness can often get us into trouble. But as we mature, we learn to control what God has given us. Zeal is good in its appropriate circumstance. It's about controlling the thermostat of our spiritual heart that we don't become too hot or too cold. We can become too hot. We got to cool down a bit. We can't get too cold that we don't care anymore or that we don't, you know, uh, let them be, whatever. Let them go to hell. You know, that's having a cold heart. It's not a good place. So we have to control that temperature properly. And it has to do with our thermostat. Okay, both extremes are unprofitable in the kingdom of God. They're not good. So we have to control the temperature. We are the proper climate people. That's what we need to be. The proper climate people. When people are around us, they should feel comfortable. They should feel the right temperature. They should feel cool when the time is cool in a heated place. They should feel warm in a cool place. Paul and David are great examples of temperature control. David said, is there not a cause? He stood up when he was seeing Goliath taunting the people of Israel when they were on two separate hills. And David was seeing them do that. And he's saying, what's going on here? Is there not a cause? That big galoot has got to come down. What's he doing? We are the army of the living God right here. And so David is saying, there's a cause here. That is wrong. He defeats Goliath by saying, is there not a cause? So he was zealous. He was hot. 
And then he goes on to prove that, that zealousness again in order for him to get Michal. He went with his army and he ended up going to the Philistine camp, killed 200 Philistine soldiers, and he got 200 foreskins. Wow. He was very, very zealous for God to be able to do that with his mighty men. And when it came to Absalom, when he took the kingdom away from him, he did not rage, but he remained cool about it. He was saddened, but he remained cool. And then when Saul was in the cave, he allowed himself to remain under control. And he remained cool. He did not seek revenge. He could have killed him. He had the opportunity. He even cut a piece of his material, of his, of his robe off, to show his proof. I could have killed you, but I didn't. See, he remained cool there. The temperature of his heart was right. In both circumstances, when he fought Goliath and when he got those foreskins, and then when Absalom tried to take this kingdom away and when Saul met him in the cave, he remained cool. Paul, another one who was very passionate, very zealous before he became a Christian and even after. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13, where he's preaching and all this stuff. And then there's a sorcerer there. He got fed up one day and he says, enough is enough. You know, in the name of Jesus, come out. And then there was another time where he was in prison. He remained cool and he was all shackled. And at midnight, he was praising God and there was an earthquake and he remained cool in the whole situation. And so just to say, when you have the right temperature, things in the kingdom of God advance. Things in the kingdom of God happen. Hallelujah. A well-functioning air conditioner and furnace help us to cope with the different outside temperatures of life that come our way. The devil is creating a lot of hot things, a lot of cold things, and we have to come in and, and be that perfect climate control person. Hallelujah. It speaks of balance. It speaks of, of your temperament. The use of our thermostats gets fine-tuned by his word throughout the course of our lives. It's a lifelong process. We control it by our knowledge of the Word, our passion for Him, our maturity in the Word of God as we realize this is how we need to be. The fruit of the Spirit is that perfect climate control. Hallelujah. The last one is self-control, of which there is no law against, the Bible says. All this is all climate control for our hearts. Praise His holy name. Which brings us to the plumbing. We're going to finish off with this here. About four years ago, four or five years ago, a drain pipe in the basement below my sink, in the basement wall, disconnected and began to leak. So I had to get that repaired through an insurance claim. See, when something is disconnected, separation happens. A flow is broken, resulting in a damage of personal property. We were meant to flow properly without any seepage or leaking. Did you know that? I had to get somebody to come over and inspect, well, where's this water coming from? We tore the wall open. We saw the pipe. It was disconnected. That can happen spiritually within you when things aren't flowing well, when we're not obedient, we're not in sync with God, and we're not taking the time to want to grow. We're just allowing ourselves to go with the flow of the world. Pipes get loose, disconnected. The Holy Spirit is not flowing anymore. There's leaks. I remember in my first church, there was this old Pentecostal guy, and he was on fire for God. I mean, he loved the Lord. But he would say once in a while, he says, have you been filled since you leaked out? I know you were baptized in the Holy Spirit, but sometimes we leak out. But have you been filled again? Have you fixed up the pipes that allows that Holy Spirit to flow once again, clearly and consistently and well inside? No pluggage. Have you put that plunger in there just to make sure that the pipes are clear? Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Things have got to flow properly. If you look at your own personal body, all those veins, we don't want to die of a heart attack. When things don't flow well and in our arteries, it's not good. The blood don't flow. Our heart stops pumping and get a heart attack. And that's dangerous. That's the end of your life. You get a heart attack and if nobody's around, a lot of people have died of heart attacks. We don't want to die of a spiritual heart attack by having our pipes disconnected. We were meant to flow properly without any seepage or leaking. It all sounds kind of funny the way we're talking here about furnaces and AC and, and plumbing, but there's some truth to that. Every believer will get filled 
with the Holy Spirit at one time or another. But we need to get filled again. Hallelujah. We need to get refilled. If it has to be on a daily basis, so be it. Don't ever be afraid to say, Holy Spirit, just fill me again today. I need your spirit daily. Hallelujah. Not weekly, not monthly, daily. And if it means momentarily too, let it be. The world has a way to drain us through leaks in our spiritual piping. Spiritual maintenance of our plumbing can prevent major unforeseen leaks. If we're not in tune with him, if we're not remaining filled, we're going to leak out. When we don't pray regularly or study regularly, our pipes get infiltrated with the corrosions of this world. But if we are diligent in our relationship, the junk in our lives will find their way through the plumbing and into the sewer. Hallelujah. Where it belongs. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. And that's what I'm talking about, getting rid of our flaws. That's all being flushed out. God is working to us flaw by flaw. So to wrap it up this morning, the temperature of our spiritual being is so very, very important. Very important. You know, if we look at Jesus in Matthew chapter 23, we can sense his temperature rising. But that was simply because of religion. Religion was being schooled and disciplined by Jesus. And he was rebuking them. That was a heated rebuke. His temperature was hot, but it was a good hot. It was a passionate hot. And something needed to be done. Religion was being schooled and disciplined by him. It had been almost three and a half years that they were testing Jesus and the temperature was rising to that point. Now, I'm not saying Jesus blew a casket and sinned here. No, it was time that they were being schooled once and for all. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 26 says this, be angry and do not sin. In other words, you can get hot about it, but don't sin because anger is that friction, but it's a holy one. You can still be angry at the things that the enemy is doing, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, get hot and sin not. That's what he's trying to say here. So when it came to Jesus, for the most part, he kept his cool. If you want to know who was cool in this world, Jesus was the one that was cool. Galatians 5, 22, 23, and I finish with this. But the fruit of the Spirit, or what makes your furnace at the right temperature is this. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's long-suffering, which means patience, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, self-control, against which there is no law, no limitations, no boundaries. These things, you can have them to the max working inside of you. And we have all of these fruit at our disposal, nine in total. And they regulate everything from keeping the pipes clean to total home comfort. Jesus is building his church and he is repairing that furnace and the AC, and he's keeping them pipes really clean. Hallelujah. So I hope you got something out of this message, because when Jesus is building something, he's building it from scratch, and he's building it right. Hallelujah. So Father, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are keeping that furnace in us at the proper temperature. Your word is the one that sets, so oh God, the thermostat. Hallelujah. It's your word, O oh God. As we obey your word, O oh God, the temperature is right. And you're the one, O oh God, who calls us to remain cool in times of cool. And, and Lord God, when it's time is right to be angry and not to sin, when we are to remain cool and warm at the perfect temperature, O oh God, is, is according to your word. You want us to be like that, O oh God. And Lord, you are keeping our pipes clean by your spirit, by your word, as we obey, O oh God. Hallelujah. And you change us. So, Lord, help us to be willing, O oh God, to be changed so that, O oh God, we can be that total comfort in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you're blessed and uh, hope to see you next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.